Oh, yeah. Now you gotta reset this thing. Reset it, I guess. Yep. yep. Here, no. Keep turning, it'll be all zeros. Keep going. Otherwise, there you go. You want it to be all zeros, so let's get nine. So there you go. Stop. See this key? Yeah. See that flat part? Yeah. That goes on this side. Okay. So just like that. Okay. Yep, make sure it's in there all the way. So you, yep, there you go. Now pull the key out. Eep. There you go. You know this one? Yep, that has a different that's a different key. Oh. Um, so I want a different key. No, just a couple of them because the box has got broke. There you go. All right. Make sure it's locked. There you go. Put the key, turn it, and then you just really easy. You put it in, you pull it out. But how is that easy for you? It is easy. Uh, let's do this. Is this, the this is, key? Nope, it's a key oh. I showed you before. I know this is confusing. How full is on? This key. How do, you, how do you remember this? I just do it enough. Yep, there you go. Nope, oh, let's not put it in that bucket. Let's go into this. Alright, set that up there. Is set, it? Yep. Because we're trying to keep the machine separate. Get this one open. Okay, can I throw it? Yep, I dump it in here. Push it all the way in. Now turn it the other way. Turn it the way. There, there you go. Now pull the key out. There you go. Take that box. I'll take this one. Let's get it back. Actually, got to use these. Set this guy up there. Which key is this? This will be that same one before, that one. Just got, just got pulled straight. Okay, there you go. Put it all the way in first. All the way in. Push it all the way in. Nothing. There you go. There you go. Yeah, we're working on it. I'm sorry about that. There you go. Next one. You want to follow me? You don't have to be so crazy with it. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Let me just carry it. Let's go. Watch out. Yeah, what's up? Yep, I'm just working on that. Sorry about that. Watch out, Dylan. Sorry. back room put these in there. Careful. Shut 
door. Okay. Guys, on. Guys, on. Shut the door. See what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Counting quarters. This is how you figure out how much money you actually made from the machine. Okay. You want to empty some machines? Sure. All right. There's stuff all over these machines. I get a lot of questions about laundromats. I mean, I'm getting a lot of questions. I'm getting like 100 emails, I think just today alone, about how to buy a laundromat, how to own a laundromat, how to get a laundromat. Financial questions, how to build one, how to buy one, where to buy them, how much to do, how many pieces of equipment to put in them, um, what kind of money do they make. So I'm going to start going over that in the next three videos. I'm going to try to cover it in three videos here because I don't want to run on it. I don't want to bore you with it. And then I think after the three videos, what I'm going to do is I'll do like a live chat and you guys can tune in and just ask all the questions you want and we'll, we'll just hammer them out like that. I think it's going to be the best way to go. The water? Yep. Yeah, yeah because the dryer goes hot. Now we're going to skip. These are 55. We're going to skip that. We're going to go just we're just doing the stacks. call this guy R and he basically says that he has electrical skills and he's looking to move into another state and would you suggest starting small how small can it be and still basically turn a profit how many washers and dryers would you have and he all, he's all asking for a ballpark he wants to know already Ryan should I buy used equipment or new equipment if he's going to do a laundromat should I try to buy the building or should I lease the building? He doesn't know anything about the coin laundry business. And basically he's talking about going to another area with so much money to spend on a laundromat. All right, this laundromat here, and I'm gonna call this the North Laundromat. I'm not gonna call it by its name. This North Laundromat I bought with my wife. We didn't know anything about laundromats, not a damn thing. We were scared to death. She'll still tell you that story and I should interview her about it. She thought I was nuts. Now I'm gonna walk through the other part and show you the office and the back storage room. There's like a warehouse here. This used to be a plumbing and a, and a laundromat. It's a plumbing company and a laundromat. This laundromat's been here 70 years. Back to the story though, when me and my wife bought it, it was so cheap. We only paid $70,000. Now it came with 30 washers and like 26 dryers, which was an odd mix but some of the washers were broke. So it had a nice little change machine, small change machine, had a soap machine, had, like I said, the office next door was rented for about 500 a month, had the warehouse in the back, which was a bonus. You could rent that for another five, 600 at the time. My wife and I paid so little. I mean, $70,000, if you get it over a 15 year loan, I mean, your payment's nothing. I mean, you're six, 700 a month, 800 a month at 3% interest. We bought it 
right as the economy was taking a dump. So we got a steal. The bank gave us the money for free. To this day, we've never made any payments. We've never paid for anything. This thing has just been a cash cow. It's just generated money. We've never had to put anything out of our pocket to pay for it. It's been a great investment. Our plan was to say that we opened it up. Our first day, we saw our first customer. She walked right in the front door and we're like excited. We're like new owners, right? She walks up to the change machine. She puts $10 in. She gets her money. She walks out the door. Me and my wife are like, oh, she's going to bring her clothes back in. We watch the car drive away. Me and my wife go, oh, crap. What was that? Somebody used it as a personal ATM. That will happen. And that was our first customer, our first experience. And we, to this day, laugh about it because we literally went home scared to death, sick to our stomach, couldn't believe it. We put some new washers in, we cleaned it up, we painted it, put in some flooring, some ceiling tiles, some lights, we put in LED lights. Customers showed up and drove. Now what would I do if I was going to do it again, not knowing anything about laundromats? I would buy an existing laundromat, but I would look for a good one on a very busy street that has additional income. And what I mean by additional income, if you watch Investment Joy, he has a laundromat that has apartments above it. I love that. Because let's say his laundromat only makes, say making $1,500 a month. And his cost, his hard cost, insurance, taxes, his water bill, his electric bill is like four or $500. So he makes a thousand bucks. Then he rents the two apartments out for another two, three hundred a piece. Well, then he makes $1,600 a month. That, that's what you want. If you don't know what you're doing, that's what you want to go for. Because let's say your laundromat doesn't make a lot of money at first and you've got all that investment out there, at least you got some income coming in. Now, like what I'm doing with this office next door is I'm either going to turn it into an arcade, which I know sounds familiar. I've already started buying machines. Or the other idea was I do an arcade and I was in talks with a bar, a restaurant, and they were going to put a restaurant in here and they were going to do like a limited menu where they did like four or five items. They served alcohol, they have gambling machines, and basically it'd be like a takeout slash eat in and we'd rearrange this laundromat so there was more of a seating area, but there was a laundromat. Kind of make it like a mall. We were going to make this like an indoor mall. Like you'd have that restaurant right over here, you'd have a seating area over there, you'd have a laundromat over there, you have a dog wash over there. That's kind of what we were doing. We're still going to do it. The restaurant, I've I've kind of backed away with the one restaurant owner because I got a bad taste in my mouth about how it's working. So my plan is to go in and drum up restaurants. And what, what I suggest, this is just my idea, is commercial real estate's really weird right now. It's hard to rent that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this, get some pictures, get it kind of blown up to what I want to do. And I'm going to go around and pedal it to some, some restaurants, some small, Mexican, because there's no Mexican restaurants in this little area, Mexican restaurants and say, hey, look, if you want to build here, I'll help you out a little bit. Free rent. You don't have to pay any rent. Put your restaurant. And the reason I'm willing to do that is right now it's not making me any money. But if I bring people in here getting food, I get people seeing my laundromat. Something different that we don't have in town that will draw in people. And as people come here, they'll come to the laundromat. Perfect mix. So that's what I'm working on. My advice is, if you're going to buy a laundromat, you've never done it before, do kind of like Investment Joy did, and get that laundromat with an additional income in it. You will love it because you'll get income from one part and the other. And as you cut your teeth, because that's what we call it when you're new, cutting your teeth, you learn the ropes. Because I'm telling you, no matter how much I explain this to you, how much I show you, it ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. It just ain't nothing like it and it, it's, it's going to be an eye-opener. That was a 55-pound dryer. What's the number? 490. Yep. Yeah. See, we log it each week so we know how much money each machine makes. <laughs> Ready for the top loaders? Yeah! Now the other question was, would I use, would I buy used equipment? Well, when I was first doing this, yes, I'd buy all kinds of used equipment because I didn't know any better. Now I'm going to tell you right now, you buy used dryers, you might as well just shoot yourself in the foot. 
because dryers are the worst. When they get used, I don't know what it is. I can repair a washer all day long and it works again forever. I will fix a dryer, an old dryer, and it will work two minutes and then something else breaks. I, I don't know what dryers, they got like a weird little troll in them or something. Don't buy used dryers. Dryers, once they're used, are junk. Unless they're like a couple years old and somebody just upgraded real quick, don't be getting no used dryers. I have 75 pounders, I have 55 pounders, and then I have the 45 pound stacks. The 45 pound stacks cost me 4,800 bucks a piece. The 55 pound dryers cost me 3,800 bucks, 3,800 a piece. People are gonna charge you $1,500 or $2,000 for a used one. So why are you gonna do that to yourself? All right, now reset the dial. There you go. All right, put that on the wall. Your buttons are going. Five. All right, pick that bucket up. Oh God! That'd be it then. All right. Well done. You gotta pick it up and dump it in that hopper. You think I can do that? I think you can. You're gonna learn how. Oh! It's called tough love. You gotta figure it out. Problem solving. Try to get your hand under the bucket, run one hand under that bucket and use it as a lever. There you go. There you go. Now the last question that this Mr. R asked me was, how small can you be and still turn a profit? Well, it depends. You could have five washers and five dryers and you could make a ton of money. You literally, and then this is a trick I've thought about with this laundromat. You see, this laundromat ain't very big. It's like 1,200 square feet. You know, I've got 20 machines here, and then I got, you know, another five. So I got 25 washers and 25 dryers. But you see this laundromat right now, folks? It's empty, okay? This is Monday night. It's empty, okay? This is a Monday night. It's empty. I could basically cut down my machines. The only problem is during your peak times, you're going to have people waiting or they're going to leave to go to another laundromat. Now, sometimes you get lucky and people love your laundromat so much that they will stay and wait. You could have that happen. Or people will come on different days. I've noticed that here. People don't like to come here on Sunday because it's packed. So they'll come on Saturday. They'll come on a Tuesday. They're starting to come on Wednesday now because it's packed all the time. So you could have a laundromat with just five, ten machines and make money. And especially in a small market like Investment Joy, that's a small town. I think he said that town had a population of 1,500. If I was him, I'd put one, two big, one big washer, maybe two, a bunch of top loaders, a few top loaders, and then some nice dryers, and I'd leave it at that. Because honestly, those people in that town are just going to figure out when to come back. Because most of his are walk-ups, and I'm going to give you my opinion. Hips, Speed Queen. Slam the door. Alright. Your turn. Okay. So you crank this and you... Yeah. So is it supposed to like like bounce back and forth? A little bit. Don't put too many in the water. Wait, can I hit myself? 
you could. It'd be crazy fast to put your arm or something. This part would be up here. I still put the warm up. Sorry. Yep, you keep feeding it constantly. So don't jam it up too much. There you go. Add some more. Add some more. There you go. Add some more. You want, you want consistency over speed. Just a little at a time. Remember the turtle wins the race, right? The turtle in the hair. That story is based on the fact that as you constantly work something, it's better than being real fast or real slow. So just feed it in as you go. So I'll just turn the other way. Turn it the other way. Now turn it the other way. You jammed it. There you go. Now slowly turn it and then keep adding. A little faster. A little faster. There you go. Now keep adding a little. Keep adding a little. Keep going. There you go. Keep going. Add more. There you go. There you go. Keep going. The viewers are waiting. All right. Let's get them all wound up. 740, buddy. Well, we want this one out here. 30. That was a 55 pound dryer. What's the number? 490. Yep. See, we log it each week so we know how much money each machine makes. <laughs> Ready for the top loaders? Hey, what are you doing in there? You like the top loaders too. I know you do. I see it. You're in there. You're looking at this thing going, yeah, this is the bomb. Yeah. Alright, now reset the dial. There you go. Pick that bucket up. Oh god. That'd be in there. Alright. Oh god. You gotta pick it up and dump it in that hopper. You think I can do that? I think you can. You're gonna learn how. Oh. It's called tough love. You gotta figure it out. Problem solving. You try to get your hand under the bucket. Run one hand under that bucket and use it as a lever. There you go. There you go. Hi. See, that wasn't so bad, was it? It hit my hand. And you learned something. What it hurt my hand. Well, you need to know how to do this stuff. Why do you know? Well, I just did. Boom. He's acting for the camera now.